Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, the organizer, for the, this great workshop. Today I'll talk about uh, some memory costs for sequential pair-invariant scenario. I will introduce some approach to calculate these memory costs and uh, apply them to the pairs memory square. And in the end, I will also try to see if the, I have a quantum advantage over this memory cost for classical strategy. So this is a work we started in, in Light in Belo Horizonte, and uh, we continued in the University of the Basque Country with Matthias Kleiman. And uh, well, first, just to set the basis, uh, a context is set of measurements you can perform together, and the non-contextuality hypothesis is the assumption that the the observables, or the result of the measurements, doesn't depend on which other measurements you are, are being carried. So there's a nice uh, example of this type of situation that the Paris memory square. There is nine questions with plus or minus answer. You can organize them in this matrix such that the, the context or the allowed questions are those on the same row or in the same column. And the challenge is trying to, to fill the, the square such that the product of the, the outputs for the, the rows are plus one, also for the first two columns, but the last column is minus one. So if you, you, if you try to fill this square, you see that's not possible, mainly because the, the product of the rows is the same as you take them in columns. So the last column is all be a product of the last one. So if you have plus one, you, you always have the last column with plus one. You can think of how to implement this. And in terms of a uh, non-constitutional model, you, can, you assume that each observable has a dependence of some hidden variable and is defined by it. And uh, the inequality associated to this table is the, the sum of the, the expectation value for the context minus, minus the last column. It's not greater than four. So, but the quantum mechanics is a really nice place. So we can do this in a, using the Paris memory square that has a combination of power matrices on, a, on two qubits. And this they have the nice property that the product of these observables is the identity, with exception the last column that is minus the identity. So they violate this inequality uh, with, uh, with every quantum state. So it in, uh, we will look to this scenario and the implementation of this scenario to, to see how, how can we simulate this with classical strategies. So usually this, they implement the, this type of um, scenarios in a, con in a sequential way. So they, they prepare a quantum system, they make sequential measurements on it. So it allows some uh, kind of uh, state changes during the process. And you can interpret that as some kind of uh, memory this, when you have, we allow this access to different states. So the, this this model I want to, to simulate. So the classical strategy I will use is like you allow some access to some classical states and together with some external random variable, you, you can try to simulate the probabilities generated by the quantum scenario. In this talk, I will deal only with uh, sequ sequences uh, came from, that came from, that come from uh, context, but you can use this framework to analyze a general scenario. So you can model like this. You have uh, inputs as independent parameters, and based on initial state, you get an output, and all these three parameters, they influence the generation of the updated state. So on these drawings, also implicit the, the presence of a hidden variable lambda that is in all of these lines. And um, 
this can be seen also as a, as a mixture of some, some kind of these transducers. Uh, this is an example for a transducer with two states. You have uh, two states and this uh, input, the output given the input and the probability of this transition to happen. So this is an example. And uh, the memory cost associated to this model would be simply the, the, the number of the states, the number of bits you need to record the state. There's other definitions of memory and some uses of, depending on what you want to use, but in this, in this talk, we can, use, we can simply count the number of states we use. And uh, a strategy like that for the, for the Paris memory restrictions was proposed in 2011. So you look to sequence of compatible servos, uh, quantum conditions on the operators, so that the output of each measurement, the product of them is plus or minus one, depending on the, the context. And repeatability, if you measure the same observable, you get the same output. So, Matthias Klein and collaborators, they show that you need at least three states to, to reproduce the scenario. They, so they gave in some sense some lower bound, but of course, it's not uh, the total model because you cannot achieve uh, quantum correlation with these machines. This can be read like, um, for example, if I measure the last context, uh, capital C, lowercase c, and gamma, starting M1. So I, I measure capital C, I get a plus one, and then update to state M2. So I get a plus one update, measure lowercase c, minus one, and then plus one again. And I get a minus. And so uh, we use this kind of strategy with three states to try to reach all the correlation we can reproduce with a Q-quart in the Paris memory scenario. So in principle, the number of sequences is infinite. You can repeat as long as you want the measurements. But you can see that in quantum mechanics, when you repeat the value, you don't uh, change the value of the, the probability associated. And together with the quantum condition that the product of the three distinct measurements is, is, uh, is fixed, you can reduce to, sequence of, to test sequence of length two. So you just test uh, single average, single expectation values, sequence of length two. And this is the uh, one condition for the automaton that the, the, second, the measurement on the second uh, observable can change depending on the first measurement, as, in a, as you can store the information through, through your sequence. So you have to impose this to be equal to the average of y in the case of automaton. So you have to, you can make a, a vector with these deterministic strategies. So in principle, we, we can allow for probabilistic strategies. But we don't want to increase our polytope too much because it, the three state uh, strategies they can be very high, huge like the upper bound is 6 to the 27 strategies you can of course there's a lot that are equivalent but uh, so we start from deterministic strategies to, to check if they they can reproduce the Paris memory scenario so what we do to, ch to test it's we construct the, the polytope for the deterministic strategies. And these points represent the, the output for the correlation for each of the automatons. Then we, we have this probability distribution over the, the classical strategy of the, over lambda. And uh, construct the, the correlation vector by just uh, making this mixture with, for every automaton you have an output. So you make the mixture. This can be turned to, uh, this is the vertex representation. And now we are interested in the house space representation, that just uh, intersection of these house spaces to also define this polytope. And uh, this allows us to test that every point respects this, this inequality. If every point inside respects this inequality, we have uh, 
we have the, the quantum set inside. So the quantum set is written like this, as a vector of correlation that are obtained by some a trace over some row. And this ZK is the product of the operators in, in the sequence. So if you, if you want that this is inside this, this formulation, you can just plug this equation here. And you get some nice uh, operators on this. There's some kind of witnesses. For each of these inequalities, you get uh, an operator. And if, if you, you only need to test these operators to see if the, the whole quantum set is inside. So we did this, and uh, the result that they were all positive same deficit. And uh, that means that we can reproduce the Paris Man scenario, so the Q part with a machine with three state. So of course, if we use the same machine with quantum state, we can do with a Q treat. So we 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 are left with the question: if we can use a quantum system, a qubit, for example, to reproduce the same correlation. So the model for for my sequential quantum measurements. I will use the notion of instruments that associate to each measurement uh, a completely positive map that we take based on the, the measurement I choose. And the result will take me to another state that's not normalizable, normalized, but uh, such that these, these maps uh, are completely positive, and the probability of the outcome is just a trace over the this new state. So for example, uh, a more common instrument for POVMs is the Luder. Then you j just take the square root of this POVM element to, to update your state, and this trace gives you the probability. And what I see is that the the Hilbert space of one qubit is not large enough for, to allow the, the violation of the Paris memory uh, the, of the then contextuality inequality, mainly because you can only have like projective measurements or deterministic general maps. So you can see this like a, a normal, a mixture of our classical strategies. And uh, so that's it. The, the, the qubit cannot reproduce the the the, the Paris measurement conditions. So the final result is that we need three state machines, and they are necessary and sufficient to, to reproduce the Q quartan Paris measurement scenario, and a qubit cannot do better. So just a, a summary. We look to contextuality in sequential measurements in the Paris measurement scenario. And we see that this, the classical strategies to reproduce them leads to the notion of memory cost. And uh, the memory cost of the Paris memory is, is log two of three states. And there's no quantum advantage to, for looking to this, this, this scenario. Well, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>